tonight. Modi's remarks. India's elections continue to see neck and neck polls with the opposition condemning Modi's latest comments. Fatal crash. Malaysia sees tragedy with a helicopter crash claiming multiple lives. Trump on trial. Opening statements are heard by jury as Trump's legal team braces for defense. And braving the waves, a daredevil takes to the seas to conquer Mother Nature's aquatic feats. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Verna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to World News Tonight. We have a number of updates to get you on the rundown this evening. And we begin with updates on India's elections. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said at a rally speech that his opponents would distribute people's wealth to infiltrators if they want power, drawing sharp criticism from an opposition leader. Speaking at the public rally in Western Rajasthan state, Modi told the packed crowd the opposition Congress want to distribute wealth to those who have many children. His comments were widely believed to refer to India's Muslim minority. Opposition leader Shashi Tharoor said Modi's remarks were very disgraceful, adding that the election commission would have normally disallowed it. The vote pits Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party against an alliance of two dozen opposition parties. Nearly 970 million people are eligible to vote in the seven-phase exercise, the world's largest election, which runs through the peak of a summer until June 1st, with results set for June 4th. Tragedy has struck in the region as two Malaysian Navy helicopters collided in mid-air as they flew in formation during a rehearsal for a military parade, killing all 10 crew on board. Footage found one of the aircraft clipped the rotor of the other before the two crashed into the ground. The incident took place in the Malaysian town of Lumu, which is a home to Royal Malaysian Navy base. There are no known survivors. The Royal Malaysian Navy said all victims were confirmed dead on site and the remains were sent to the Lomu Military Hospital for identification. It added that it would form a committee to investigate the cause of the incident. One of the helicopters, a HOM M5033 with the seven people on board, is believed to have crashed onto a running track. The other, a Fenus M5026 carrying the other three victims, crashed into a swimming pool nearby. And over in Taiwan, teams are picking up the pieces as cleanup efforts began following a series of quakes that rattled the rural Taiwan county. Taiwan's Central Weather Administration said the spate of more than 200 earthquakes were aftershocks from the large 7.2 magnitude quake on April 3rd that killed at least 17 people. More than 200 aftershocks have shaken Hualien, the eastern part of Taiwan that was hit hard by the island's big quake on April 3rd. The new shaking started Monday and ran through the night, causing previously damaged buildings to tilt further. Several were left leaning badly, but there were no reports of casualties. The affected buildings have been left empty since the 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit the largely rural and sparsely populated area earlier this month, killing at least 17 people. Elsewhere on the island, including in the capital Taipei, buildings sweep throughout the night with the largest of the many quakes registering a 6.3 magnitude. The world's largest contract shipmaker TSMC, meanwhile, evacuated some staff from factories on the island's west coast. It said in a statement that it does not expect any impact on operations. Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen on her Facebook page called on people to stay alert and not to panic in the event of more earthquakes. Some updates on the run-up to the Olympics now. There are skeletons in the closet. The World Anti-Doping Agency threatened possible legal action against claims that it may have covered up the issue of Chinese swimmers testing positive for a banned substance before the Tokyo Olympics in 2021, as global sports groups piled pressure on the regulator and demanded an investigation into the case. A doping scandal surrounding Chinese Olympic swimmers is heating up as the United States anti-doping chief on Monday demanded a probe into global regulator WADA's handling of the matter, while WADA itself threatened legal action over accusations of a potential cover-up. 
Named the World Anti-Doping Agency in full, the regulator confirmed on Saturday that some Chinese swimmers had tested positive for a banned drug several months before the Tokyo Olympics in 2021. It came after some media reports alleged a cover-up, which WADA called misleading. The agency has since come under fire after saying it accepted China's findings that the positive tests were due to environmental contamination, not intentional doping. We had no evidence of wrongdoing. On Monday, WADA officials hit back at critics during a video press call, explaining in detail why it did not punish the swimmers who tested positive for a substance found in heart medication known as TMZ. WADA General Counsel Ross Wenzel said one of the key factors that point to contamination was the lack of a concrete positive result of TMZ across multiple tests. The Chinese team won six medals at the Tokyo Games, including three golds. A report by China's doping agency Chinada determined that all the swimmers in question were staying at the same hotel where traces of TMZ were found in the kitchen, the extraction unit above the hall and drainage units. Though it gave no explanation for how the TMZ might have found its way into the hotel. WADA said it could not conduct any investigations on the ground due to COVID restrictions at the time. Instead, it relied on Chinada's report, then hired their own scientific and legal experts who tested and accepted the contamination theory. Couldn't be further from the truth. WADA officials insisted there was no cover up and said it would consider legal action against such claims. China's foreign ministry spokesperson on Monday also refuted the media allegations as false. But pressure is mounting from international athlete groups, who are questioning why China was allowed to investigate itself. U.S. anti-doping agency CEO Travis Tygott is pushing for a probe into the case. Ahead of the Paris Olympics this summer, Tygaard said it's crucial to clear the matter up, not only so athletes will compete fairly, but also without these doubts lingering in their minds. But going in for a short commercial break now, we'll be right back with more key global updates. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Trump's trial saw the jury hear opening remarks. New York prosecutors said that the former president broke the law and corrupted the 2016 election by trying to cover up sexual encounters with a porn star and a Playboy model, while his defense lawyer said he committed no crime. Adding, quote, there's nothing wrong with trying to influence an election. It's called democracy. Trump is charged with falsifying business records to cover up a $130,000 payment to Daniels in 2016 to keep quiet about a sexual encounter she says they had 10 years earlier. Trump has pleaded not guilty and denies the encounter took place. Prosecutors said on Monday that Trump disguised payments to his personal lawyer Michael Cohen as legal services, when in fact they were meant to reimburse him for paying off Daniels. Cohen. Uh, is a lawyer, represented a lot of people over the years. Now, I'm not the only one. That checks being paid to a lawyer. He is a lawyer, or was a lawyer. And also the things he got in trouble for were things that had nothing to do with me. Jurors also heard briefly from the prosecution's first witness, former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker, who prosecutors say participated in a catch-and-kill scheme to suppress unflattering stories about Trump and help him get elected. He is expected to return for more questioning Tuesday. The hush money case may be the only one of Trump's four criminal prosecutions to go to trial before the November 5th election. A guilty verdict would not bar him from taking office, but it could hurt his candidacy, as Ipsos polling shows half of independent voters, and one in four Republicans say they would not vote for Trump if he is convicted of a crime. And on the road to the White House tonight, President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump will go before voters in Pennsylvania's presidential primaries, a prelude to the November general election, when the Commonwealth is expected to once again play a critical role in the race for the White House. And for an analysis on what to expect, here's other than the world news special correspondent Suzanne Shanali from Toronto in Canada. 
Anuradhi neither nominee faces serious opposition on the primary ballot. Nonetheless, both presumptive nominees have campaigned in Pennsylvania in recent days with their focus more on the November election and each other than on today's vote. Biden just completed a three-day campaign swing in his hometown of Scranton and concluded in Philadelphia in an event with the members of the Kennedy family. Days earlier, Trump held a rally in Lehigh County, his third visit to the state this year. Pennsylvania, with its 90 electoral votes, was one of the three critical swing states along with Michigan and Wisconsin that went narrowly for Trump in 2016 after almost 30 years of voting for Democratic presidential candidates. Biden won back all three states four years later with a margin in Pennsylvania of about 80,000 votes out of more than 6.9 million votes cast. And states remain key electoral prices this November. Anuradhi, over to you. All right, thank you very much. That was other than a world news special correspondent, Suzanne Shanali from Toronto in Canada. And over in the conflict in Gaza now, Israel has yet to provide evidence for its accusations that hundreds of staff with the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees are members of terrorist groups. This was according to a review of the agency's neutrality that could prompt some donor countries to review funding freezes. According to Catherine Colonna, a former French foreign minister appointed by the UN to lead the review. There's always room for improvement. And some issues related to neutrality persist. This is why this mission was created. Colonna was tasked with the review after Israel accused 12 UNRWA staff of taking part in the Hamas-led October 7th attacks that triggered the Gaza war. A separate probe by internal UN investigators is looking into those allegations. 16 states paused or suspended funding to UNRWA after Israel raised the concerns, a severe blow to the agency that provides education, health and aid to millions of Palestinians in Gaza, the West Bank, Jordan, Lebanon and Syria. The review said UNRWA shares staff lists annually and that Israel had not raised any concerns with UNRWA based on those lists since 2011. Israel then stepped up its accusations in March 2024, saying over 450 UNRWA staff were military operatives in Gaza terrorist groups. A spokesperson for Israel's foreign ministry on Monday accused more than 2,000 UNRWA workers of being members of Hamas or Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and said the review of the agency was insufficient. Colonna said she wasn't surprised by the reaction. The review said UNRWA neutrality challenges included the size of the operation, with most personnel being recruited locally. It included some staff publicly expressing political views, textbooks with problematic content, and politicized staff unions making threats against management. A spokesperson for UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said he has accepted the recommendations and is calling on all countries to actively support UNRWA as it is a lifeline for Palestinian refugees in the region. A U.S. State Department spokesperson said the United States had received the report and is reviewing it. We're in the Korean Peninsula now with more provocations. North Korea has conducted its first nuclear counter-attract drill and South Korea believes the latest drill seeks more than simply a show of strength. North Korea has revealed its staged tactical drills simulating a nuclear counterattack using super-large multiple rocket launchers for the very first time. The training guided by the regime's leader Kim Jong-un on Monday was focused on strengthening the regime's nuclear counteroffensive using 600mm multiple rocket launchers. The North State-run newspaper Dodong Shimun reported Tuesday morning that Kim was satisfied with the rocket's accuracy. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff detected the launch of multiple KN-25 ballistic missiles at around 3 p.m. Monday, launched toward the East Sea from the Pyongyang area. The North said the drills were conducted to send a clear warning to its enemies, as it denounced Seoul and Washington's recent joint air drills for raising tensions. But South Korea's military has said that there is another motive behind the launch, promoting exports to Russia. We believe there is a complex purpose, like demonstrating the performance of the super-large multiple rocket launchers for exports. According to the regime, the rockets hit its island target at a range of 352 kilometers. This is approximately equal to the distance from Pyongyang to South Korea's Kedongde military headquarters. 
The South Korean military stressed that it has a system in place to detect and intercept ballistic missiles if they were to fly toward the South. South Korea and the U.S. both strongly condemned the launch. The U.S. State Department hinted that the issue will be addressed during Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to China this week. And on the Rwanda situation now, Europe's highest rights body called on the UK to scrap a controversial plan to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda after the measure cleared Parliament. For more on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent, Pavani Sinhara Mudilege from Essex in the UK. Pavani. Yes, Radi, Council of Europe Commissioner for Human Rights Michael O'Flaherty said the United Kingdom government should refrain from removing people under the Rwanda policy and reverse the bill's effective infringement of judicial independence. In a joint statement, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees and the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights also called on the UK to reconsider its plan, warning the move would have a harmful impact on human rights and refugee protection. It was stated that the new legislation marks a further step away from the UK's long tradition of providing refuge to those in need in breach of the Refugee Convention. Those who have criticised the plan before say the legislation seriously hinders the rule of law in the UK and sets a perilous precedent globally. Back to you, Anuradi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Pawani Singhara Mudlige from Essex in the UK. Let's go in for a short commercial break now. More World News right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Thrill-seeking is not a sport for the faint of heart. And with living in an island nation, we have all seen our fair share of impressive waves and surfers who dared to ride them. Well, here's a look at one daredevil that attempted to tame the sea. Dude, this could be the largest wave ever surfed says just about every surfer to their buddy after catching a big one. But in this case, it could actually be true. Sebastian Stoitner is a German surfer who tours the oceans of the world in search of colossal waves. Officials believe he definitely found one. Sophisticated drone footage captured Stoitner off the coast of Nazare, Portugal. This part of Portugal is popular with serious surfers because an underwater canyon helps create very high waves. And Stoitner has the gear to face them. His surfboard was created in partnership with Porsche Engineering, designed like a race car for speed. The monster wave was measured at 93.73 feet by the drone. If the size of the wave is ratified by surfing officials, then Stoitner will have broken his own world record that he set back in 2020. I mean, imagine being so good, you break your own records again. Well, that wraps up our bulletin tonight here at World News. Join us again tomorrow for more key global updates. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.